coffee houses are a place where you can socialize with your mates, people of different classes, people of different religious views, talk about politics, talk about religion, talk about different things like that. So for an authority, if you see a coffee house and you're not quite sure what's going inside unless you frequent the coffee house yourself, um, Ottoman authorities were pretty quick to diagnose the potential problems uh, that could come without a guiding hand of, of religion or, or politics to steer conversations um, to a different way. So they viewed coffee houses as being kind of the fuel for, for a sedition. So the early banning of coffee houses, I think the Ottoman example is the most kind of extreme, and most interesting, um, is that they begin to be banned in 1544. So there's a ban on all coffee houses. Uh, more followed over the years, so you had more bans, there were more coffee houses. The most serious was issued by the Sultan Murat IV in 1623, when he ordered all coffee houses of Istanbul to be torn down completely. Um, he reigned from 1623 to 1640, and during that time of the reign, they were all torn down. After his reign was over, they built them up. Um, the other case is that drinking coffee could also be um, a capital punishment, so you'd be drowned, I guess, for drinking too much coffee. Not you wouldn't drink too much coffee and drown, they would drown you for drinking too much coffee. <laughs> uh, and they and they um, reintroduced the tearing down of coffee houses again. Uh, in neighboring Persia, the Shah um, dispatched official orders to coffee houses of major cities to lecture on religion and history. Um, they were you know, there to inoculate them on the virtues of the Shah regime, but of course the people that were there probably were less interested in listening to them than the people sitting beside them. Okay. And later in Europe, and in the United States at a later time, coffee had a huge social impact. Um, in London, coffee houses were called penny universities because to have a cup of coffee only costed a penny, and the houses were packed with people discussing the latest news and latest ideas. Europe coffee was um, served to patrons communally and discussion and education were basically the whole reason for being there. So you didn't go to a coffee shop just to have a coffee with your sweetie, or it was have a coffee with someone that you have a serious conversation with. Yeah. So they give coffee. They yes. Get to the coffee houses. They sit down. The gov the government finds out that their other religious this is regime like because the government was more religious than it was like governmental. It, I mean, okay. So you're in a church, right? Hmm and you're talking about religion with your pastor or your bishop. You don't talk to the bishop directly, right? Mm -hmm. The priest, if it's Catholic or Anglican. Mm -hmm. And you get many, I mean, I'm, I'm not Catholic, but my wife's Catholic. I don't really get many times to talk about religion, mm -hmm. um, the scripture, directly with the priest or the minister. If I want to do that, I mean, some, some churches will have Bible study. Right, where you'll have this leader and they'll lead you to the scripture. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get into it, you go in a you go in a, a space where everybody's alert and you just talk about scripture or political ideas with your friends, right? Mm -hmm. And you hash them out. No one's guiding you. It's only your reason or lack of reason or passion that's guiding you in these discussions, mm -hmm. right? So eventually you might have ideas of your own, you know, through deductive reasoning and all these things like that. And if you're an Ottoman Turks and you're kind of wary of people having uh, views of themselves, coffee houses can be a dangerous place for discussion. So they were first religious? Uh, coffee houses were not religious. You can, can you talk religion at the dinner table? I know people say it's a no-no, but you can, right? Yeah. Right? Um, can you talk politics at the dinner table? Yeah. Yeah. And the dinner table is not religious. It's just the dinner table. The coffee house isn't religious. Okay. It's not owned by the state. Okay. It's not even run by a proprietor. I mean, really, if I wanted to get a 
let this loose, I would give you guys readings, like books. I would hand them to you. I'd say, come back in a week. I'll leave the room. I won't talk. Talk about the books themselves. It's a free for all. See what ideas you come up with. I'm not even going to ask you later on to write a paper. So maybe you'll just read and talk about things for the love of reading and talking about things. That's the kind of idea of the coffee house. That's going to be pretty threatening to someone that's used to dictating. Okay. And then that was, so basically they were just started and then people brought in like, they started talking about religion and politics. Sure. And then after a while the government says, hey, listen, these guys could be a threat to us, so let's start banning them. Yes. But you, I mean, if there's lots of coffee houses in the big city, it's hard to... Yeah. Were there like secret underground coffee houses? Uh, there would have been later on. Yeah. 